All right, guys, Kevin Bryan here, fishingknife.com. So I think we're going to get out and do a little bit of spinnerbait fishing today. I thought I'd go out and shoot a video and try to go over the what to do's, what not to do's, and what not with spinnerbaits. So we are going to uh, head out for I go to Lake Barkley and do, uh, do some spinnerbait fishing. Maybe we're not. Maybe we're just, I uh, guess maybe I'll just go inside and we'll talk about the different types of spinner baits, different color situations, blade situations, because it doesn't look like we're going to go outside in this. So anyhow, I'll be back in a couple minutes and uh, we'll grab some spinner baits and just talk about them uh, inside the house where it's dry. We were going to go out and do our spinnerbait deal and of course it's uh, pouring cats and dogs out there so I'm gonna come down here and just go over some of the basics on spinnerbaits you guys have probably seen them a hundred different times uh, just gonna go over my take on it and for those of you who you know haven't done a lot of spinnerbait fishing uh, hopefully we can uh, teach you something on this and even some of the guys that have used it or, or if you have used them maybe not a lot of success with them or maybe don't know where to use them uh, hopefully we can help you out on that too so um, quick overview, starters, you know, spinnerbait's just basically, uh, what it is. It's a, it's a, almost like a swim jig, uh, wire off from it. You got an R bend, you got some that are twisted here for the line tie, and then you're going to have some sort of combination of blades. You may have a single blade, uh, Colorado on there like that. I mean, you can have a single willow, whatever else. Uh, you'll have a combination of maybe you've got double willows such as or double Colorados such as that um, Double willows like this one here is and this one here is a combination of a willow and a Colorado um, Again your Colorado blades are just going to be your more round type blades like that uh, Your willow blades are your longer slender ones and then you've also got a couple of them that are in-betweens and whatnot. You've got an Indiana blade, which is, it looks a lot more like a Colorado than it does a willow, but it's just, it's got a little bit longer, a little longer leaf to it, um, like that. Just, uh, it's just a different bait, or a different blade, just gives off a different uh, vibration, and used in just you know niche situations and it can be one that you can throw all the time that's just an in-between of those and the other one is called a turtle back or a turtle blade um, which is kind of similar again to what the Colorado is kind of got that that round you know rounder shape to it but it also is a little bit fatter version of what a willow leaf is so it's, a, it's another one too. These are great. The, the Indiana blade and the uh, turtle blade, I think are great blades for really pressured spinnerbait fish. There are some spots of spinnerbaits that deal, some lakes, that's what those fish like. And I think those specialty blades like that, you put those on and it just gives those fish a different look than seeing the same spinnerbait going by, 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 by. So that's where, that, that's where I would use those two is just, uh, you know, so, something to give the fish a little bit different look on highly pressured lakes. Um, as far as blade combinations, <clears throat> again, you can have a single, you know, a single blade, just like this. This one here happens to be a nighttime spinnerbait. It's black. We've got a single Colorado on it. The Colorado um, is going to give you the most vibration, and it's going to give you the, mo the most lift, um, it's one that you can throw. It's going to make you, you know, it's going to give them enough the most vibration. We throw it out there, especially in the dark, dirty color water, cloudy days. You want something that's just going to make a lot more sound in the water and cup it. You see a lot of guys who want to uh, burn a spinnerbait right on the surface. They're not, I shouldn't say burn, sorry. Uh, guys that want to run one just under the surface or just gurgle it under the surface. They don't want it to break, but they just want to bulge the surface of the water. That's where you're going to take this bait or this bait. you got a double Colorado or just single Colorado. You're going to throw it up there and you can reel it real so you can keep it reeled slow. 
and yet keep it right at the top of the water and bulge that water and, and keep that bait right up there, right at the surface because you want it at the surface where those fish are going to be. They can't quite make it out. It's breaking in the water. They just know there's something there and they come up and get it. Um, the other, you're going to go to a double, cut, double willow. And what you can do with this is burn this bait. This is a good... Uh, a good bait for when the fish are really active or you really want to trigger those fish you can throw this out here and burn that that willow leaf blade so much faster because it's narrower it doesn't have as big of a, a radius as it's going through the water and that will get the that'll get those fish's attention that they don't have any time to decide um, you throw that double Colorado out there and you're gurgling it's going across it's going a lot slower those fish have a chance to either look at it or not but the reason you're throwing that is to give those is to throw off more vibration for those fish and, and get it up there with the double willow you're throwing it and you're burning it across the very top of the water a lot of times that double willow is great for smallmouth fishing because you can just burn it seven to one gear ratio and you're just cranking it and I mean that things getting out there and getting it done and those fish will just explode on it um, a combination a lot of a lot of spinner baits will come in is a willow combo with a Colorado. Um, it's usually uh, the Colorado being the smaller blade uh, on the arm of the spinner bait with your willow leaf um, on the back. I mean, size is all just determined on where you're fishing and what you want to fish. But um, the reason they do that is to give you be able to pull the bait a little faster without having two Colorados. It gives you the Colorado vibration effect, but gives you the flash of the of the willow leaf and that's another thing the willow leaf will throw off there's more body of the uh, blade there so this will throw off more flash than what will you know just uh, uh the colorado does um and and that's kind of how too i that i'll run my you know that i'll run my baits i will run a single colorado or even the double colorado when i am fishing basically shallower muddier water where i want to be able to keep the bait down and or at night time like i said this is a nighttime spinner bait being black um you want to silhouette it at night against against the sky there um, that's where i'll throw these a little more compact bait um you can throw it around the wood throw it up shallow um that that's a big deal there uh, you don't need to have the big willow leaves out there flopping around in, in that. The willow leaves is where I tried to throw more, uh, especially when I'm throwing a bait deep. This here is a three-quarter ounce bait. And I'll throw a three-quarter, one ounce, ounce and a half, even up to a two-ounce bait, say here in Kentucky and Barkley Lakes, um, where you want to get that bait down there deep. You want to put some big blades on there that'll look like the big shad that are out there. Throw that bait out there and just slow roll it down there on the bottom. And... Uh, and keep the bait and keep the bait down there and have something that looks like a big a big shad down there that's where i'll do that you'll notice this one's painted blades versus you know you got your your normal nickel blades and your and your gold blades um i will use these sunny day clear water that's where your that's where your your silver blades are going to come in or your your chrome blades um gold blades generally clear water but a cloudier day um, overcast day, maybe raining, or even a lake with maybe a little bit of stain in it. Um, you get into muddy water situations, and or a lot of times when I'm smallmouth fishing, a smallmouth will react to painted blades. Um, that that painted blade just seems to throw off more flash in, in dirtier water. Um, sometimes at overcast skies, you can have a clear day, you know, clear water, but with a uh, um, overcast day and a lot of times that that blade there you know you can get them in oranges and yellows and, and whatnot um, and that that will throw off more flash uh, another blade that's out there are these blades that have got uh, I'm not even sure that they're on here just got some bumps or some ridges and stuff on them that there will throw off a lot more flash too because there's a lot more surface area to that blade and it will break that light differently than just throwing a, a straight uh, flat blade will so those are uh those are the type of different blades that are there um the different baits again i throw my big ones when i'm out on the ledges trying to get down you know deeper uh the willow leaf trying to make it look like a big you know big bait fish down there on the bottom on the ledges um your black ones for when you're fishing at night trying to silhouette it against the, uh, the the sky and against the water with a colorado blade again you know either a nickel or 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 gold i mean at night it's just it's more the the 
vibration the blade's given off, and that single one will give off more vibration than, than a tandem will, but that tandem works really good when you want to get it up there in the water column and keep it right up on top, but yet reel it slow. Um, that works really well with that. Um, other than that, uh, trailer hooks, I love, I love a trailer hook. Um, if I'm not using a trailer, I seem to, myself, I, I don't like to use a, a some sort of plastic trailer and then a trailer hook. I tend to get it more, the bait tends to be messed up more than it really seems to help me. But if I'm, especially at night fishing, um, I love to have a trailer hook. Uh, and these Gamagatsu, these here are Gamagatsu, Mustad's got some. Um, a lot of make them, they got an oversized hole in them. And you take that. And you don't need an extra big hook. You don't need the hook the same size as the you know your hook on the bait. You just want something extra back there. But they'll have that, and just take it and slip it over the hook that you've got. Well, obviously, when on easy, it's going to come on off easy. So what they give you is they give you tubing that once you've got that on there. And what I like to do, there's some some will send you with tubing that you're supposed to take and put over the hook like this just like that and then you know cut some of that off so and then you you power the hook through that hole what I prefer to do and it seems to help out and it keeps that hook a lot freer is again get it over there so that hook is nice and free see that thing just get it out of the way of the skirt but that thing's on there moves back and forth really nice what I do then is take my tubing and you can cut it first or put it on and then and then trim it after that. But I will take that tubing, push on here, and pull it over. And now what I'll do is, if I had my scissors with me, I'd, I'd trim that off right there. And now this can come up and hit that and this can still swing around. If a fish bites, it's still going to push that tubing down. But you uh, still have the freedom of having that hook swinging around. The difference is, is if you've got that hook inside that tubing now that's what that hook's doing it's it's bound right there and it, it doesn't move anywhere and I, I when i'm casting and wanting to let this thing flutter down and all i just prefer having that and especially if you get that fish caught on that back hook he's got a little play there it isn't one solid bait again and he gets up there jumping and has a possibility of throwing that bait so that's a one way that that's the way i like to put that trailer hook on there definitely is is having it free swinging as such but those are uh those are some of your spinnerbait basics as far as colors and stuff that you just have to mess around with on uh, on the lake that you're on again it's no different than a swim jig or your spinner baits or your uh, crank baits your whites and your silvers and your chartreuses uh you know your your your, your silvers and whites and translucent colors and clear water your you know your your blacks your, your more blues and color you know colorful skirts like this with some chartreuse and, and blues and you know pinks and stuff in them if you got a little bit of a uh, little bit color to the water but that all is pretty much just goes on uh uh, on, on, on the color that you're that, of the water that you're fishing um, just like any, anything else that you'd be doing so um, it uh, that's basically the basics of, of the spinner baits that uh, you know everybody's seen them but that those are the areas that where I use them and uh, hopefully that will help you catch a few more fish out there and put a few more fish in your boat so uh, until next time tight lines this is Captain Brian with fishing